Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new AJAZZ model. Now, I kind of got confused and I had to look it up just to make sure. There is the AK820 Pro and now we have the AK820 Max. As far as I can understand, that this is just from bits and pieces I collected on the internet, that this is a newer revision though you can tell right away what's the difference between the two now i am kind of doing it backwards what geek sent this out to me for review and um i picked a really interesting color one that i'm starting to get a couple more keyboards in but um i do have an ak820 pro i will be reviewing after this one and then probably i'll do a comparison between the two to kind of get an idea of any improvements, changes between the two models. But today we're taking a look at the AK820 Max. So it's the later or the latest revision of this 75% keyboard with a knob and a screen. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on into it and see what we've got in the box. All right, so in the box, we have a nice orange rubberized USB-A to USB-C connector. We have a horseshoe switch puller as well as a plastic keycap puller which i highly recommend not using these as they are very good at scratching keycaps so this is what i do with mine and here we are with the ajaz ak820 max now it's nice to see that we have a uh, dust proof cover on here although kind of wish that it was uh, a little bit more formed but i do know that the orange one and part of the reason why i picked this one it has a round knob. It's almost like a complete globe on there. And I got to say, I kind of like it. Now, it does not feel like it wants to come loose, but I got to believe there's a way to get it loose as if we need to open it. Oh, it does. It just has a nice tight fit with a, feels like a very hard rubber or silicone in there. So... We do have a uh, standard knob, not a D knob, and it goes down pretty deep into the case, but I'm sure that other knobs that are not D knobs, like especially the ones with the screw, I think those would work, um, the set screw, but we can take the knob off. Now, looking at this, this is quite colorful, and it's called orange cheese, um, this colorway. So, all right, I have yet to review the AKA20 Pro, which a lot of people have been telling me about. In my opinion, this is the best out of the box sounding AJAZZ keyboard that I ever viewed to date. This is just, it's pleasant. It's nice and pleasant. It's that creamy, marbly, I, it's got, there's got so many adjectives for it now. I don't know which one to go with, but I like the hi-fi. I, I, I feel like that's a, uh, it's a it, it it it's good because it it does kind of feel more stereo if that makes sense. But let's see what we've got in here. All right, we have some interesting linear switches, and they are branded Ajaz. It's got a brown stem, like a beige top, and like a green bottom. Ooh, they're a nice loud linear with the nice pop that looks like an fr4 plate is that an fr4 plate we definitely have flex cuts on the plate and it does look like we have a pet layer above the pcb and then an ixpe layer above that with feels like perhaps a silicone rubber down below so we have some uh some nice double shot keycaps. They do feel like PBT, though I'll have to check. Let's see what kind of thickness we get out of these. 1.5 millimeters for thickness, which is very good in a stock OEM keyboard, not OEM profile, just OEM original equipment manufacturer. So that is a good thickness. We do have south facing five pin hot swap PCB. Now let's check out these stabilizers. 
We have plate mounted stabilizers that do appear to be a tad bit over lubed. And as I've been um, basically just a suggestion that if they're over lubed, it's a good idea to clean them off because what's going to happen, that lube is going to attract dust over time. And eventually that dust will mix in with the lubrication and it will become almost like a mud and will make your stabilizers either sluggish or completely get stuck in up or down positions. So I have to clean those off. Out of curiosity, no, we do have a layer between the plate and the PCB, but it does not look or appear that there is the ability to add screw and stabilizers to the PCB. So at least these are seem to have a pretty good tolerance for plate mount stabilizers. Yeah, there's there's no wobble whatsoever. They're like one with the plate. So it's not that big of an issue. I've been seeing an increased improvement in plate mounted stabilizers to the point that it's like they're so good it's it's hard to even tell unless you know you pull up the keycap and actually look is this a plate mounted or is this a pc mount now the only thing that i do like when pcbs have support for screw and stabilizers is that it gives you the option depending on the construction of the keyboard mind you but it gives you the option to go plateless in many situations and that's always a plus uh, because out of some keyboards you can get a very interesting tone and feel out of plateless keyboards so like i said we have a 75 percent um, instead of an f13 key we have a square screen and we have this round knob that i just want to say it reminds me of a particular cartoon company slash um, fun theme park company it's not the same but i don't know what the d stands for since this is orange cheese delicious don't know. Um, we have a four key navigation column. We do have cherry keycaps on here. Um, I gotta say, I like the fonts. Um, I like the legend on the fonts. They're they're very clear and crisp. Um, I wonder if these are uh, this, these look more like the die sub because of the pattern. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. So we've got a couple of the keys that are actually die sub, but we did not get any any extra keys i prefer and if ajaz if you guys are listening please include some extra keycaps especially you know if you're using novelties or include some novelties but also include at least one for every like 15 switches on the keyboard an extra switch that way if there is an issue with a switch i've heard so many times people that like oh one of my switches just died what's happened i mean I've gone, I went a long time before a switch actually failed on me. I thought the keyboard was going bad and I've got plenty of keyboards and I know, but I was like, ah, let's stop. Blah, blah, blah. And then finally I was like, let me just try a different switch. Popped in a different switch. Everything was fine. And it turned out that somehow or another, the spring leaf inside of the switch just got, it, it, it was, it wasn't making proper contact on actuation and it was basically lopsided. So sometimes it would make contact, sometimes it wouldn't. And that a lot of times can be the issue. Obviously, it's making sure that it's inserted all the way and you know that it's clicked into the plate as well as properly slotted into the hot swap socket it makes a big difference as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and see what we got here. All right, so we do have below a pocket for the USB 2.4 dongle. We have two sets of flip down feet for a total of three typing angles. Oh, this is a familiar side profile. I've seen this on a few 75% keyboards, though it doesn't have any of the ports on the side. We have ports on the back. We have some pretty chonky buttons for Win and Mac, as well as USB 2.4 and Bluetooth. Let's turn it on and see what we got. All right, so the knob does not appear to control anything as far as being able... Oh, no, there we go. Never mind. All right, so let's get to English. Yeah, all right. So now we can 
we can control the effect. And are any of these lights on? I guess because I'm not connected. I've seen a lot of these that if they're not connected, they just don't show. Brightness, 100%. Speed of the effect, the volume. We can cho choose to go to volume. We can choose the language. And then we can choose an animation. So it looks like we're going to be able to upload custom animations to here. And then we have just our regular dashboard screen. So there's a dashboard screen that's going to show you what mode you're in, uh, 2.4, the time. Obviously, the time will not sync up until you um, plug it in to your keyboard. This one is actually exactly 24 hours ahead. It's from the future. I have a keyboard from the future. And then we can go through the effects by scrolling through. And the last one's going to be the animation, which we'll take a look at when we look at the software. And then we've got the time. I do got to say that <clears throat> the orange pop on this is fun. Um, there's too many keyboards that they have white and black bodies, and then they change the color of the keycaps and call it different colors, but it's still just a white or black base. And don't get me wrong, the majority of the keyboards I have are white and black, and I, I like the, the base color or lack of color to build off of, but sometimes I like a little splash of color in my life like i'm really getting into the blue um baby blue and the navy blue as well as red crimson red oh they just make for some gorgeous boards and you can mix other colors in there that you know may not necessarily off the bat seem like they'll work together but then they do so today i'm just sticking stock uh with this keyboard but i do want to come back to it and there's some some really heavy orange tactiles, eminent switches that I want to pop in here. And there's a couple of different keycap sets that I'm thinking of going with um, that are going to be a little bit taller, probably a little bit deeper. But I've got to say, this is honestly the best A-Jazz keyboard that I've heard, especially out of the box. I've modded a few and gotten them to sound much better, but this one, it just sounds... I find. I mean, that's the term they're going to give it. I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and go with it. But I got to say, now the only question is mappings. Though I've got to say, uh, some previous A Jazz boards just had a really you know they just wanted to replicate kind of the uh, the way that a TKL is, and they would have insert and then delete below, or wouldn't even have delete here. But this is the way that I would set it up if I have four keys. I would put insert below here, um, then page up, page down with home and end underneath. And I would probably do something. I, I've put a lot of different keys there, but an end is just like the default. Um, it would be nice to have a super key. Um, it's gotten to the point that, yes, it's not the year of the Linux desktop, but not everyone runs Windows. Some people run Mac, some people run Linux and a super key Super works across all operating systems. Super key, we know what it is. Windows is not the end all be all. So I think manufacturers really need to, if you want to include a Windows, a Mac, and a super key, awesome. That gives people even more choice. And adding a couple of keycaps to a keyboard isn't going to increase the price too much, but it's going to allow for people to customize them and make them feel more comfortable. I mean, I've actually had people tell me, well, I don't want that keycap set because it has a win key. Even though they like everything about it, if it comes with a win key and it doesn't have like a super or a code or even command, which is Apple, but at least that is different. You know, Windows is Windows. Command, all right, I can see command. And I've used command and code as a super key. But a super key, I think, is what these need to be called. They're not Windows keys, they're super keys. Yes, I know Windows were the first to add them to keyboards and everyone uses them now. But I use a super key in Linux, so it'd be nice if we saw that. Uh, and that's just me being extremely nitpicky, because otherwise I, I'm loving this keyboard. It's just like I said, when I only use my Windows machine when I test out the software, which I'll be taking a look at the software for this here in a little bit. FR4 plate, you still got the, uh, because it's gasket mounted for sure, 
So you still got a good amount of flex, but again, this is not overly flexy. And the switches don't seem to have a hard time going in as they tend to do with some PC plates. Some PC plates, you have to do a little bit of leveraging sometimes to bring the plate up and push the switch in. But I gotta say, I'm liking this uh, orange cheese because uh, it's, it's just, it's got good colors. I'm actually thinking of maybe even doing like a mix-up set. Now, like again, I wish that it would have had a couple extra keys, but I'm thinking of a couple of sets that would actually mix in well with these. Oh, actually, you know, I'll, I'll stop talking about it. We'll get to that when we come back to this keyboard and um, open it up, take a look at what we got on the inside, maybe do a couple little mods to it, add some tactile switches, and change out the keycaps. So far, this has got to be my a jazz board because i haven't been necessarily the biggest fan i mean i have a few a jazz boards mind you but i've always just been a little i don't know turned off about how they do their key bindings and how their software works and previously i haven't really tested too many that sound good out of the box after some modern yes but just out of the box no we've been seeing a lot of companies especially this year in 2024 that are just stepping up their game not only bringing prices down but also bringing features up so it really is a consumer's market right now and that is a pretty cool thing just the specs today we are taking a look at the a jazz 8k 820 max a 75 percent 82 key three mode keyboard with a knob and a customizable screen in an abs case it has a gasket-mounted FR4 plate. This one comes preloaded with avocado linear switches, as well as double-shot PBT Cherry keycaps. The 0.85-inch customizable screen and knob can be customized with an animation and can be also used to control various features of the keyboard. It is a hi-fi keyboard, meaning that it has a PET IPX layer, as well as a cotton dampener between the plate and the PCB. Both the plate and PCB do have flex cuts in them. The weight of this keyboard comes in at 875 grams, and the battery has a capacity of 4,000 milliamp hours. The chin of this keyboard sits at 23 millimeters, while the back sits at 32 millimeters off the typing surface, providing for a default typing angle of 7 degrees. Flipping out the first set of fold-out feet will take the back to 38 millimeters and change the angle of typing to 9 degrees. Flipping out the final set of fold-out feet will take the back height to 43 millimeters and provide a typing angle of 12 degrees. This keyboard is MSRP'd at $69.99 from wetgeek.com with free worldwide shipping. Links below. So I took a look at the software for this keyboard. It's not the standard Ajaz Fair. It's one of the packages that seems to be on some of the more popular um, newer keyboards with the screens and you know the hi-fi setup. There's also a time sync button. Uh, you have a function layer. You have the ability to do per key RGB. And like I said, upload uh, GIFs to the screen. Now on the screen, we have the ability to cycle through and select the effects right through here, um, select single colors if we wanted to, select the brightness of the effects, um, when we can control volume, and also press, presses just takes us back, there's no me. Then we've got the speed of the effects, volume, oh wait a minute, I went backwards. So we've got brightness, speed, volume, language, and then it goes to the, it only has one slot for an animation, goes to that animation, and then it goes back to the primary screen that has your time, your date, your battery, as well as your different modes. So, like I said, I I find this thus far, in my opinion, it's the best Ajaz keyboard I've reviewed to date. I've always had little nickels about them, um, complaints, but, the software, the key bindings, they, this is one of the first ones that actually makes a little sense. Um, it was easy for me to add the uh, insert under the delete 
uh, and it, it was, <laughs> I'm, I mean, they're, it looks like they are catching up to other manufacturers and actually thinking a little bit more about the things they're doing because the decisions they've made in this keyboard, uh, takes care of a lot of the issues and the complaints that I had with previous models that I've taken a look at. So, um, I actually, I know that some people have been like, oh, this, you know, because it does look like a D. I think it's supposed to be an A and that it's a ball. Um, now, of course, you can get uh, different different ones, but this is, feels, it's, it feels like a good, a good um, I don't know, I'm going to say it's steel because it feels heavy, uh, but it's a good metal knob with like a softer plastic, not necessarily rubber, but just a softer plastic round hole. But there's a lot of knobs that you'll be able to put on here. Not the D knobs. The D knobs aren't going to fit because it's a fully round hole. But especially the ones that have the, the knobs that have the little screw inset screw for locking, uh, those will fit on here. They're a six millimeter diameter knob. So I actually kind of like the ball. And I mean, it's easy for, for me to move around. So um, I would like, it would be nice if there was like a volume lock where it but anytime you press, I mean, I guess you can leave it on the volume lock there, but as soon as you press it, which I would like for mute, it doesn't work. But. Now, so in a little while, I will be taking a look at the AK820 Pro, which has the screen down here and has a regular knob. Um, there's also a three mode, has the switches down at the bottom. I try to get a hold of the AK870. I think those are updated TKLs, so... I'd like to take a look at those as well because like i said um this is really one of the first ajaz boards that out of the box i've been like i like uh they've done a lot of things right um they come at an affordable price point and i mean you don't find too many decent <laughs> orange mechanical keyboards so um orange is just one of those colors they kind of just tend to shy away from there's some colors that you'll notice that i mean practically all the manufacturers will stick to the basics you know if they just have one it's usually black or they'll have black and white first they might have a black white and like a blue or like a pink or a purple or something like that you know to be a little adventurous but for the most part a lot of the keyboard colors are like this just white with a you know different set of keycaps for a different style now this one i do believe comes in several colors but we'll see when i get to it but I've got to say, uh, this is a um, this is an interesting uh, little 75% with a screen with the ability to upload GIFs to it and, or just pictures. Now I would there, would like somebody came about with a like an API for these screens to be able to you know basically select different things from your computer, you know things that are available through sensors through you know different internal APIs of the operating system that would give you, um, you know, system data. So you could have like a little system screen, how much RAM you're using, you know, how much CPU, how many cores, so on and so forth, or even just be able to have a basic word per minute. Um, and, you know, with the ability to go through and reset it, you know, whenever you want it to, so that it averages out for as long as it's on. So you can just get an average route i think that would be pretty cool will we see it i don't know um i should just say hey why don't i build it <laughs> if i had more time i have been so busy as of late that's why my videos have slowed down but hopefully i'm gonna get back to it i've, I've got a nice um queue of, of keyboards that i've got to do build uh, mod so i'll be getting to those but today i hope that you did enjoy the review for the Ajaz AK820 Max, the AK820 and the AK870, those might um, give this one a run for its money, but who knows? Like I said, this one does have a lot, of, a lot of charm because of the color, because this is just something that you don't see, and I, I, I like uniqueness. I, I like different things. I mean, they may not always be the best executed, but I like that one, though, you know, like I said, I could, I could see that as an A. I could see that as a D, um, a specific D. I don't mind the knob being like that. So, and and the colorway, and I like 
the keycaps. They're actually they're nicely done. The legends are nice and crisp. So it, it, there's they did a lot of things right. Where I'm usually like, why didn't they just do it? X, Y, and Z, and here they've done Q through Z. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the AK820 Max from AJAZ, um, sent out to me by What Geek. Um, I'll be putting links down below. If you have any questions, any comments, anything, anything you'd like to see me do when I come back to this keyboard, like, you know, check this out, open it up, mod it, which I may do. Um, do let me know below but for right now i want to wish everyone an awesome day until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on